This is Twit. Hey folks, I'm Ant Pruitt. And what do you get your favorite tech geek that has everything? A Club Twit gift subscription, of course. Twit podcasts keep them informed and entertained with the most relevant tech news podcasts available. With the Club Twit subscription, they get access to all of our podcasts ad free. They also get access to our members only discord, access to exclusive outtakes behind the scenes and special content such as AMAs, which I just love hosting, plus exclusive shows such as hands on Mac, hands on Windows and the untitled Linux show. Purchase your geeks gift at twit.tv slash club twit and it will thank you every day. So have either of you guys tried um, open open GPT yet? So I've got I've got two anecdotes about chat GPT that I think are both pretty interesting and both of them highlight um, some pretty important things about it. So the first one is in the in the private uh, Hackaday discord, one of our writers said, um, I asked chat GPT to write an article for me with the prompt and then it's a, a Reddit URL about a 3D printed film video camera. And he said, the prompt is that URL and then write an article about the project in the style of hackaday.com. And then he told us the output and the output is great. It looks really good. It is actually in the style of hackaday.com. And we all looked at it and went, <laughs> wow, if this gets much better, we're going to be out of a job. Yeah. And then yeah. another, so we all said that. And then the guy that posted it said, yeah, it sounds good. The writing is good. But the facts are all wrong. <laughs> what it did, chat GPT is not connected to the internet. Like it can't go get new information. It has a snapshot of the, yeah. of the internet. It, it made facts up just based on the URL. Oh, it took great. what was in the URL <laughs> and created out of its cloud of, you know, of training data, everything else. And that's one of the really interesting things about ChatGPT. It has come to the point to where it can write in such a way that sounds good, sort of good. It's not amazing yet. Obviously, it will. It'll get better. Um, but it doesn't yet understand the facts. Like, it doesn't understand what it's writing. It just knows how to put it together in a way that, that sounds good. And then the other story, the, the other one that just really blew my mind, uh, engraved.blog slash building a virtual machine inside – the guy put together a prompt and said, I want you to act like a Linux terminal. I will type commands and you reply with what the terminal should show. He set this up and then he had a command line prompt. He could run the LS command and it would show him things inside of it. He could run the CD command and change directories. He could use touch and create new files. He could even ping and it would give him back to the correct ping responses. But... When you started actually digging into it, it was a snapshot of the internet from several months ago. So he did oh, things wow. like, you know, show me the latest version of this library. And it would pretend that it went off and talked to, you know, the, the Python library site, um, PyPy or whatever. And it would respond with, here's the library version that was current when our training data was created. So, and so I here's think, the interesting, yeah, yeah. Well, Go let ahead. me let me let me finish this. I don't yeah. think so. This was a surprise to the people that wrote that put together Chat GPT and put it on the internet. They did not know you could do this, and in fact, pretty quickly thereafter, they went in and made changes so that you can no longer do it. Like this is no longer an allowed thing. We don't actually understand what we've created here. This this is this is doing things that are surprising to the people that created it, which. It's really yeah, fascinating. Yeah, like there's a little like the Sorcerer's Apprentice, like, oh, look what I can do now. And uh, and then this happens. There's a, um, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm wondering, so remember when, this is going back, you guys may have to be old enough for this, but it, but like in the, when early on in Google time, like even up to like 2004, 2005, if, if you wrote something on the web, Google didn't know about it sometimes for like a month because it was mm -hmm. kind of combing the static web, but now it indexes everything almost in real time. What happens in open, open AI is doing something like Google does now, where it's indexing, it's not just indexing, it's learning, not just indexing, a difference in kind. And, and now I assume the open AI people are gonna have to get a few billion dollars in investment and put up giant data centers or, 
or take over the ones that they Google abandoned because they became obsolete. But I mean, it's, it's an interesting question when an intelligence and not just a record keeping system is not just indexing, but trying to understand what people are writing and what people are doing and can actually do like do a ping for me, right? Do a ping for me because you not only know how, you can come over here and <laughs> do it for me. It's an interesting question. I mean, I, you know, put in a funding behind that thing and maybe some really extra creepy or good or both things happen. Yeah, so I, it's, a, it's a valid question. Are you ever going to be able to throw enough data and processing power at this that you're going to get a true generalized artificial intelligence? Yeah, or is this always yeah. just or going to be enough. machine learning? Right? It, it, yeah, I don't know. Close enough is, is different. Um, yeah. Because yeah, it's really close, close to enough. being close enough already. It, depending upon what prompt you give it, it's close enough. Um, but to actually make the leap to generalize artificial intelligence that's actually, you know, active and yeah. and, and a, approaching, you know, the kind of the, the sci-fi thought of self-aware. I I don't know. That's a that's a big leap between close enough. It's it's and a big that. leap, but I'm I'm not sure. It, I, I think for some things, it's just like so. My main dialogue with it, and it was quite funny. Um, for, it was so my my wife has a new um, um, MacBook Air, and sorry about that, but that's what she's got. And it has the new MagSafe connector. And I asked it. I said are there any adapters for MagSafe 3? Because it's called MagSafe 3. And it said, there is no MagSafe 3. <laughs> There's only MagSafe <laughs> 1 and 2. The, everything Apple has made since MagSafe 2 is a USB-C connector. I said, no, that's not true. <laughs> if if you look here, here's a link. And it said back to me, say, look, I only have, I, I'm only good till about April of 2021. I don't know anything since yep. then. <laughs> yep. And I thought, wow, that would, that's really interesting. That's, that's historic in, in a really wrong way. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> history ended then. I don't know anything since then. And it's, it's really live stuff. But up to that point, I was having an argument with it. Like it says, you don't know what you're talking about. I happen to know, I happen to know. They went to US, USB-C. <laughs> And there, there is no Mac Safe 3. And, uh, and I didn't get a sense that it was learning from that in a similar funny way, by the way. And I put it in our little chat here. Um, uh, somebody on Twitter said, I'm sorry, I simply cannot be cynical about a technology that could accomplish this, which was write a biblical verse in the style of the King James Bible explaining how to remove a peanut butter sandwich from a VCR. <laughs> and it's perfect. Oh, yeah, it's hilarious. It is pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's worth looking that up, folks, if you're, or just look, go to our, our, uh, our, yeah. our notes. Yeah. So, Doc, first <laughs> off, you need to kid kidnap your wife's laptop and install Asahi Linux on it. And <laughs> I'm sorry, but you just, you just need to do it.